Hello, everybody, and welcome to Time Capsule here on the Games Done Quick Hot Fix. It's the show where we travel back in time to your favorite years in gaming and showcase awesome speedruns of games released in the same year. I am your host, Smooth Operative, and it's been a little while since I've seen everyone, so thank you so much for joining us. Tonight, we are checking out two games that might have slipped past your radar last year in 2022, Have a Nice Death, followed by The Spirit and the Mouse. But before we jump into the action, uh, we're going to cover a few announcements. Uh, first off, SGDQ 2023 is coming up May 28th through June 4th in Minneapolis, Minneapolis, Minnesota. Yes, it will be live in person again. So if you're interested in attending the event, registration is now open until May 3rd. And off-site volunteer submissions are also open from now until March 22nd. You can go to gamesdonequick.com for more information on that. And also, Games Done Quick is returning to PAX East 2023, March 23rd through the 26th. So if you are attending PAX East and uh, you want to see us, make sure you check out the speedrun stage if you're interested in catching some speedruns live or playing through our gauntlet. Uh, but right now, let's all hypothetically have a nice death with our next speedrun. Uh, please welcome High Five from Ryan. Ryan, what's up? Hi, everyone. <laughs> uh, high Five from Ryan here, and I'm super excited and very grateful to be here. Uh, to be kicking off this episode of Time Capsule, I know we're only going back maybe like one year. So uh, this game was released, uh, not released, yeah, it's actually still in early access, but it will be available uh, eight days from now. That's right, mark your calendars. March 22nd will be available on Switch. That's right, Nintendo Switch as well as Steam. So check that out. Uh, but for today, uh, we are checking out some Have a Nice Death, a little bit of a optimized speedrun of the game. Now, you may have seen this game on uh, three months ago uh, from J Hobbs and Keys are on. They did an episode of The First Step, I believe. Yeah, and first it was step. awesome. Yep, first step was awesome. Uh, and uh, J Hobbs and Keys are on. They did an amazing job highlighting this game's combat, the platforming, and just really introducing like all of those. Uh, these amazingly drawn characters. Look at this art. I mean, seriously, this art's amazing. <laughs> and um, that was that was super cool. But today we get to experience kind of like what speed running in this game looks like. But for those that don't know what Have a Nice Death is, welcome aboard. Uh, it is an action roguelike uh, platforming video game where there's a lot of elements of randomness. So all the all the levels that uh, get generated completely random. All of the upgrades that we get, completely random. So you might be thinking, well, how is this a speedrun if everything is so random? We just watched a randomizer just like, you know, maybe 15 minutes ago. Well, thankfully, we have this lovely little guy here. His name is Joe. And Joe's going to give us a couple meta progression things so that we can make speedrunning a little bit easier. Uh, we have a wonderfully named uh, Tira Morto. It's kind of like a play on words of Tira Mursu, Tir yeah, is that right? Tir oh, Tiramisu? Tiramisu, my favorite. <laughs> yeah, that's right, yeah. So there's Tira Morto and uh, big fans of Pi Day. It's today's Pi Day, so there we go. We kind of want to see this in our speed run because it increases death's movement speed. And, you know, who would have thought we like to go fast? And um, we also, uh, Joe also gives us the ability to unlock spells, weapons, and a whole slew of like different uh, things to put in death's arsenal. Uh, we're, first, we're going to be looking to get bees. We're getting bees because uh, Smoothie, you're a fly, honey. And uh, all right, sorry, that's that's a that's that was. Uh, <laughs> but also, we got Fire Screamer here as well. Uh, I'll, I'll get into why uh, these spells are really good for speed speed running in a little bit. And uh, we also have uh, this other lovely um, friend of mine. Her name is Jocelyn. She is the spirit of the elevator. Uh, Jocelyn's amazing because she lets us get bees right off the get-go, and uh, we can start our runoff with getting bees. Uh, we can also kind of like re-roll these little things called contracts to uh, kind of like jumpstart our run a little bit. And uh, for this one, we see right here, uh, these are things called Prismium and Solary. Uh, these are two different types of resources that uh, allow us to upgrade our spells, weapons, cloaks, stuff like that. So uh, we'll get more into those in a little bit. So we got one there and we got another here. And as you can see, uh, Jocelyn will reward us with something. However, it kind of comes with a catch, right? It's kind of like the, the, the nature of a contract. So as long as like, uh, we'll give you this, but uh, as long as you meet these terms. So it kind of like really spices up your speed run in quite a big way. Um, with that out of the way though, I think we're ready. Chad, are yeah, you ready? I think so. 
Whenever you want to give us a countdown, Ryan, we're ready to go. All right, perfect. Uh, right after the loading screen, I'll count down from three on to go. Mm -hmm. All right, so three, two, one, go. So right off the get-go, this game loves to give us a lot of different options. So we're going to choose the regular base scythe. Uh, I just like the scythe, the regular scythe, just because of like, the movement feels pretty good for me. But if uh, you're just playing the game and like, you want to check out different things, then by all means, go for it. This is our other friend here, Osha. Osha is a really awesome dude because he gives us uh, these upgrades I was talking about. They're all random. And uh, there's three different trees that we can go down. Uh, the, the red tree focuses on scythes and cloaks, mostly. The blue tree focuses on like giving you more health, more defensive options, and a little bit of like, other uh, bits of utility. And the green tree focuses on spells and uh, how to like increase your mana and your mana regeneration and fun stuff like that. Uh, this room is called a arena encounter. So basically, uh, we cannot progress any further in the game until we beat all these enemies here. So our objective is to beat all these enemies as fast and as optimally as possible so we can continue on, collect our reward, and keep on schmoovin'. Uh, the other element of this game is platforming. <laughs> platforming is great. Uh, we'll take this intriguing floor here. Intriguing floors are pretty sweet. Uh, and it really does highlight all the platforming. So if I mess up here, um, I'm so sorry, but we'll be, I think we'll be fine. <laughs> so we failed. Uh, we failed because failing is actually quicker. Um, it's all right. Don't worry about it. I love how the game is like, you're too nervous. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Right. Um, we are experiencing a, ooh, another important part of the game here as well. And these are called, uh, the, the mini bosses of the game are called Thanagers. This little boy here, his name is William Hong, or Will Hong. And uh, yeah, we gotta beat him as fast as possible. While trying to ev evade all these wonderful attacks that he's got. Perfect. And watch him just kind of like hang his head in shame. Oh, we'll just take this, this is fine. So also while you progress through, uh, progress through the upgrade tree, you get these things called penalties as well, so it also like spices up your little run life uh, by uh, buffing enemies and stuff like that. Uh, this is a shop. Shops are great. This is Mark. Mark's a great dude. Gives you a whole bunch of different stuff, but we're not. Uh, we don't have a whole lot of money right now, or solary. We have, uh, or yeah, we don't have a whole lot of resources to be shopping. This is the first end boss. This this guy is awesome. His name is Brad. Big flex for Brad. Uh, he is our head of security and uh, definitely very hard at work. You know what I mean? So I'm trying my best not to get. No, yeah, I thought that was gonna happen, but it's all right. Whoop! Perfect. Not bad. Not bad. Not bad. So why I'm able to beat this boss, or beat the Thanagers and uh, the Sorrows, that's right, the end bosses of this game are called the Sorrows. Why I'm able to beat these enemies so fast is on the top left hand side, you can see uh, a lot of things different going on on the top left side here. We have health, we have mana, we have like different spells that we picked up, but we also have this glowing purple meter. Once that is full, um, uh, we can do like a big special attack and like that's generated by uh, doing a lot of attacks with your scythe, with your spells, with your cloaks, stuff like that. So once that bar is full, uh, filled, you can uh, do some serious damage. This is World 2, uh, home to, uh, we have some uh, amazing uh, associate or assistant here, Pump Quinn, and our little friend here, his name is Bert. We, uh, he didn't have a name for a while, but he is the signpost guy, he tells you where to go. And I just, I just love the, the animations and the art style of this game, it's just, uh, it's just absolutely wonderful. So, uh, yeah, I know I threw a lot at you, but uh, <laughs> uh, it's the game. We're, we're speed running. We're trying to go as fast as possible. And I swear, these uh, these guys here, they can um, they have like homing missiles, I swear to God, because they can just easily mess you up. Can I ask, Ryan, when you started speed running this game? Uh, yeah, good question. Um, it was really early uh, into the... Uh, we'll go here. Um, I started speedrunning this game, gosh, I want to say like at least... 
nine months ago, ten months ago. Yeah, like it was like really oh, early wow. in the uh, yeah the early parts of uh, the early access uh, when it was available. So um, I got to play uh, since like learning how to play this game and speedrunning it. Uh, I was the first person to get a sub-15, and that was at the time a world record for, for this game in early access when people were really like more like running this game. Uh, let's take the uh, more damage. More damage, more good. Uh, the map is no longer accessible, so these again, these are like penalties, you know, makes the game like a little bit more interesting. Thankfully, we don't need, uh, I, I know a little bit enough about how to navigate, so I don't really need the map. Yeah, this game has like really evolved though um, since playing this game for like a very long time. Uh, like, we've had like I think four worlds at, at, at the start, and now there's like a ton more. Oh wow! <laughs> there's been yeah. A lot of, oh, there's been a lot of content. Uh, big shout out to MDS uh, Mag Magic Design Studios, uh, obviously the dev team here, because they've done so much for this game and like listened to everyone in the community, and it's been really wonderful. Are the devs involved with the speedrun community as well? Actually, yeah. Oh, uh, nice. I would say a little bit. <clears throat> uh, I would give them some like some sort of feedback, and uh, the devs like not even just like my feedback of like the, or like the speedrunners' feedback, but just everyone's feedback in general of uh, you know what everyone thinks like, genuinely, and, uh, and they made a lot of changes too. So um, yeah, they they truly believe in their game, they're, and they they're very passionate about their game. Nice. This guy is Slima. Slime is a really cute, spidery. I don't know. I, I love slime. Slime is really cute. I think I think slime is cute. We have a lot of things going on right now. And all right, perfect. Ooh, you know what? This is fine. This will help increase our damage a little bit. Shop increases. That's okay. All right. Um, healing sources. So healing sources in this game is, uh, you can see it on the top left hand side of your corner, uh, the healing sources, right? So there is, uh, those like little three diamonds that you can see on the top left hand side of like right above the health bar, there's two gold ones and a blue one up there. Uh, those things are called anima, so, uh, you can use these little resources to heal you, which is nice. Uh, another way of healing. Oh no, there's a one that lingered around. A one. Another thing that heals you in this game is coffee, and if that isn't a mood, I don't know what is. <laughs> I like that. All right, perfect. And just like that, we are. Uh, oh, we we did want to see the control room. Unfortunately, the control room is where we get to um, upgrade. Yeah, let's get this. Why not? Uh, Let's try this. Let's try. Let's try a thunder build. I'm feeling. I'm feeling it. So do you just right, kind so of I'm, like wing it when you're going through a run? Yep. Like it's just whatever appears to you. Yep. You just take it as it comes, basically. That's awesome. Uh, yeah. Also, like I run this game in Japanese because it, it is faster because Japanese text go burr. Um, <laughs> true. True. But but just for like the sake of. Uh, Accessibility and uh, for, for all you wonderful, lovely people in chat and and on uh, YouTube land to follow around, I figured I'd just keep it in English for now. Using another fury here, and perfect. There is Grimes. So we turn Grimes from a very macho, very like tough-looking persona into a little weaving puddle. Uh, let's see if we can get some more. All right, yeah, we can take some more damage. Damage is good. And that is world two. Here, all right, so this is the break room. The break room actually plays a pretty big part in just not only casual runs, but speed runs as well. This is uh, where we can heal up some things. We can heal our health here. We can re restock the fridge and hopefully we, no, we didn't find it. Uh, we're also like in, in the break room. You're looking for other food buffs uh, that can either increase your damage, but also uh, increase your speed to go even faster. But uh, yeah, they're they're very helpful for sure. Oh boy! All right, 
not too bad. Ooh, there's Fire Screecher, or Fire Screamer. Fire Screamer is really great because it's very, it can deal like a lot of damage and we can uh, show that in one of these next fights here. Oh, we got two. There we go. So yeah, as Fire Screecher would suggest, we are like just screeching fire out of our mouths and that's pretty neat. Do you have like a favorite kind of build that like you're always happy to get when you're going through a run? Oh my god, um, that's, that's <laughs> maybe a loaded a question. question. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a little bit. I'm gonna take the Osha here just for some safety. Um, I like getting Arch Druid. So it's a it's a green curse called Arch Druid, and it's 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 legendary, so it's really hard to get. But once you get it, uh, it really like sacrifice or it's like a double edged sword where like. Uh, the more of the anima and the top left hand side we were talking about earlier, the more of that you have stocked up, the more damage you do. So it kind of like rewards like really skilled players, and I think that's pretty cool. Nice. Uh, and and um, it gives you a bunch of damage. I mean, like a ton of damage. I did also forget to ask if um, the levels are set or if any of them are like generated as you go. Oh, yeah, they're all randomly generated. Oh, okay. All these different tiles are just randomly made up. I have no way of, like, I'll, I'll know what a tile might look like, like, by, just by muscle memory. Um, however, I, I, I'm not going to know what a preset tile from, like, that elevator A to elevator B is going to look like. So I'm, I just kind of, uh, as you can see there, that wasn't optimal because I thought I'd be going to the right when, in truth, didn't happen. <laughs> they really keep you on your toes with that then. Oh my god, yeah, <laughs> for sure. Yeah, really liking Fire Screecher, or Fire Screamer, um, just because it... Now that we're getting some, like, uh, damage buffs to our spells, it really increases, uh... Like, uh, it just, it, it keeps like ticking up, up damage for each hit that you're within a vicinity. It's kind of risky because like you need to be like super close range for it to, to do the most damage. But uh, once you have like this kind of damage, it feels really great. And it's kind of wild too. So um, this build specifically, we have something called Infuse Lightning right off the get-go that you might've like remembered from the early part of the game. Oh, uh, we might get stuck here, boys. <laughs> Um, so yeah, it's really interesting how like you can breathe fire, but also like summon lightning at the same time. I think that's pretty wild. Um, wild, very yeah. cool. Yeah, <laughs> definitely very wild. I might need to, yeah. So remember how we were talking about uh, <laughs> in the green room about like, hey, this has never happened to me before. Uh, yeah. Um, this has happened to me before, <laughs> but it's it's very, uh, it's not very often. But this world sometimes will <laughs> get you stuck. <laughs> and um, I might need to restart real quick uh, if it doesn't let me go. Sometimes, so like the devs like are aware of this and I'm, I know they're fixing this, uh, this bug. But um, in a little bit of time, it, it should be able to uh, release. If not, I can just um, quit. But thankfully, it'll, it'll remember which stage we're at and it'll just let us, let us go. So right now it's kind of soft locked. It's a little bit soft locked, yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I can give it like another like minute. If it doesn't let us go, then I can just uh, reset, and we'll, uh, the game will remember like which level that we're on. So like we're not like forfeiting the, the the run at all. So when you get stuck in here, you're just waiting for these um, papers to kind of move out of the way, I suppose. Yeah, that's definitely the case for sure. <laughs> uh, unfortunately. These right, things so happen. Let's, uh, let's just uh, quit real quick. Yeah, hopefully they, they, they fix the bug. Yeah, they, yeah they've, um, they're aware of the bug for sure. All right. This is Harriet. Harriet's awesome. Harriet is the... Uh, she's the NPC that really gets us through the tutorial of the game. Which is really cool. Uh, she really introduces like all like, the different parts of the game. Oh, oh. Right, we're fine, chat. We're fine. So she's right, your your go. tour guide, I guess. Yeah, basically. 
Nice. Wonderful. All right. Well, we we made a chat. We did it. Uh, we are out of the soft lock zone. Back into back into the run. Oh, I got hit. All right. It's fine. It's fine. I got hit. It's fine. <laughs> Uh, a really important part of this game is uh, dashing. So as you dash, um, you get a little bit of iframes, okay? So like whether you're a new player or like you've played for a very long time, one of the most important parts of this game is dashing. So yeah, uh, you get to a, a, you get like a little bit of iframes. It's pretty generous in my opinion. All right. And uh, it's, it's, it's super vital. Uh, to like a lot of these boss fights and stuff, so. We just saw there, so remember how we were talking a little bit about the fury attacks? Well, it works, uh, each spell, each cloak, each scythe, they have a unique fury attack, and uh, yeah, the fire screamer or fire screechers is really good. All right, so remember we also talked about bees. Why is bees so good, and why did I want bees so bad? Well, once you level up bees to the max level, that me that makes death run even faster. So, you know, <laughs> speed running, uh, moving faster. Yeah, seems like <laughs> a necessary uh, skill. Seems pretty good. Uh, so you get to see how uh, a subtle difference, but it's very noticeable. This here is Mr. Hector Crank. Uh, he's our crabby boy, very crabby boy. And, oh, we got the one cycle. All right, our damage is pretty fire. Yeah, our damage is pretty good, Chad. So I know I'm making a lot of these. Oh, Death Priest is there. Ooh, do I take that? Yeah, why not? Whatever. So I know I might be like making a lot of like these boss fights very trivial, but I can assure you they're not. Uh, I just, um, with many hours of gameplay and kind of like figuring out different more consistent builds. Uh, ooh, yeah, it's plus more damage, let's go. Yeah, it's just um, being able to kind of like figure out more optimal builds and like what to look for in the in the upgrade tree. So like, uh, it's, it's fun to experiment around though, to check out like what different things you can have available. Um, yeah, like I said, like, I'm just playing like, with whatever the game gives me and it gave me a bunch of lightning and deadly butterflies. So you know what, I'm going with it. <laughs> Well, and you had said you put, what, over 500 hours into this game so far? I did, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. so that's a lot of time to, you know, fine-tune what builds work and what goes together. So I think it's it's good. All right, perfect. Ooh, perfect. We, um, so relaxation area is another free room. We get to chill and uh marathon luck has uh forgiven us from the soft lock earlier by giving us a free room here so that's wonderful but yeah i mean like the game is still in early access and the devs are still working like tirelessly like around the clock to you know fine tune things Ooh, all right i guess we're going downstairs and uh yeah i mean Things could very well change from now until, uh, you know, eight days from now. So really looking forward to seeing like what the dub team, you know, does. And yeah, it's gonna be great. Have they given any like hints or clues about what they might have been working on to prepare for the launch? Uh, if you watch or if you look at their Twitter or, or their Discord, there is an official Discord. Um, they have uh, a few kind of like teasers of like what's going on. I don't know if I'm really at liberty to say. Oh, uh, fair, yeah. Still check it out. There's always like more content and stuff like that for sure. Uh, they're working really hard at uh, finishing up and wrapping up the game for sure. Uh, I know they were working ex extremely hard at making the Nintendo Switch uh, uh, version very optimal. So like playing at a high FPS and a very enjoyable experience for anyone that plays in the Nintendo Switch. This is Camouflage. That's right, there's another pun in the, in the game. She's adorable, right? I can assure you she's not. She, oh my god, she will destroy you. She is uh, evil, and oh my god. All right, all right, we're fine, we're fine. Oh no. All right, <laughs> she's nuts. She is... <laughs> A vicious she, one. <laughs> she, absolutely. She is... Uh, 
but it's all right. We made it through. Um, if you're not careful, uh, she can definitely mess you up. That's right, Echo. Yeah, I'm see I see you, Echo, in chat. Yeah, the, the community is super nice. Uh, there's a very healthy, like, artwork community. There's a healthy, um, just a very, like, overall, like, just community in general. Uh, people are very helpful with, like, you know, helping new newbies, like, find out, like, new builds and, you know, different things like that. And it's really, it's really wholesome to see. Is we have two encounters in this room, which not optimal, but it's okay. Another thing I'll, I love about this game, though, is the unique, um, unique enemies that this game like pours out, as well as the uh, soundtrack. So there's like e each with each world, there's like unique enemies, unique artwork, unique sounds. Just everything is just kind of new, which is really wonderful. So let's see, with this, um, hoping that we have enough damage, and I think we do, for the end bosses of both of this level, we're getting pretty close. We're getting pretty close, chat, to getting to the end. Because I'm not sure, uh, forget, I forget if uh, J-Hobbs and Keys were able to get to uh, the one last boss. I'm, I think they might have, actually. But... We'll be getting there pretty uh, pretty shortly. And this next boss that we're talking about, Mr. Major Plishkan, he is a pretty good uh, pretty good indicator of how much damage you're doing. Look at that elevator music. Just, it's an absolute bomb. <laughs> we're getting ready for the DPS track, I guess. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, we didn't one cycle him, but that's okay. Perfect. Now you can actually pull off a thing off screen here. Yep, I did it. Nice, we did the trick, chat. We did the trick. GG. For off, sc <laughs> off screen, we can kind of like guess around or estimately guess around like where the uh, Mr. Osha is, and we did it, chat. So hopefully that made up for the soft lock earlier. Little, little trick earlier there. Uh, we can just keep moving on. That's fine. No, right, this is. Go ahead. I was gonna say, Ryan. After the official release comes out, do you plan on doing uh, more speedruns of this on your Twitch channel? Yeah, absolutely. I'm gonna be doing uh, not only like a lot of Twitch streams about uh, speedrunning the game, uh, but also just uh, content about having nice stuff in general. Uh, hopefully, to help out anyone that might want to play this game and might be having a difficult time putting a build together or what to really look out for, uh, different types of builds that you can put together, like not just, so I know I'm showcasing a more like spell heavy build, but also like what other builds like can you make in this game? So like, you know, uh, one that we really aren't touching on that's really fun actually is uh, Cloaks and Scythes, Ooh. where uh, yeah, you can really do some pretty fun combo stuff. Like think of, um, oh, very nice dodge. Think of like um, Devil May Cry almost, where you get to do like a lot of like air, aerial juggling kind of things and aerial combos. It's a lot of fun. Oh yeah, it does sound fun. Definitely. Um, but yeah, I'll be definitely recording a lot of stuff on YouTube as well, uh, just for that purpose. Cool. Do you think that you might end up doing a tutorial of sorts for anyone that might be interested in the game? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, uh, for sure. I'll be. I'll definitely be doing that. Sweet. Tutorials. Um, I've done uh, some other fun things. I've did a uh, er earlier in my uh, YouTube videos when the game was still like, you know, way early in early access. I did a no hit scythe only run. <laughs> so <laughs> uh, some fun challenges like that as well. Yeah, you gotta love the this challenge is... runs. Or uh, I messed up a little bit. So this is Sinistrosaurus. It's a. Uh... Yeah, we don't need this. Yeah, we don't need this. Oh, yeah, let's go with that. Um, uh Really awesome, uh, operatic. 
the thundercloud <laughs> the the thought of like a lot of these characters are just so unique and fun <laughs> But yeah, the, uh, the operatic thundercloud Sinistrosaurus, uh, yeah, it just uh, sings opera and rains down lightning like Zeus. It's pretty wild. That's honestly epic. <laughs> yeah, I think we have the damage, chat. We have a lot of mana. We have a lot of damage. We still have that food buff take carrying us pretty far. The food buffs in the game last about 10 minutes. So in the grand scheme of things, if you're for those keeping track at home, ooh, actually, shoutouts to uh, Wizulch here. Uh, Wizulch is a um, <laughs> Discord moderator, and uh, yeah, the the mods love, or sorry, not the mods, the uh, Magic Design Studios love the mods so much they actually put pieces of the mods themselves in the game. So that's uh, amazing. There's a kind of like token of appreciation for the mods. There we go, Wizulch. Shout uh, shoutouts to you, buddy. And uh, yeah, there's a there's a lot of different uh, quirky shoutouts uh, that the uh, that the devs like put in the game. Uh, there's an uh, there's an enemy in the game uh, mult, uh, made after one of the one of the mods, Magma Boy. Shoutouts to Magma Boy, and uh, it's just really cool. Also, the platforming in this game is like criminally underrated because not only. Am I going or have to go like, you know, from left to right? But there's also a lot of like vertical movement as well that, uh, yeah, it, it's it's actually refreshing. And, and you specifically, uh, yep, go ahead. I was just going to ask that if you're playing this with like a PS4 controller or what you're using. Yep. Uh, there's definitely people that uh, in the community that play with a uh, mouse and keyboard. I prefer um, I prefer controller, though. Just, it just feels more natural, but I mean, the uh, again, like the Magic Design Studios, they've really uh, listened to people that are. Oh, th there's Magma Boy. Hi, Magma Boy. Hey. Um, yeah, the the devs really like wanted to make it as accessible as possible. So um, for people that had uh, comments and feedback about how to how to play the game on uh, mouse and keyboard, uh, they listened in, and it's really nice. Ooh, all right. Finally, this is the last sorrow of the game so far. Uh, time will be on the last bit of health. So when, once I, as soon as I defeat the boss here, or sorry, the sorrow, that will be time. All right. So I will call it out. I believe we have enough damage. We should be able, able to melt, uh, melt Catherine Emimura. She's amazing too. I love uh, I love Catherine Emimura. All right, time. <laughs> nice, GG. Gosh, GG's high five. That Let's was so this. that was so <laughs> fast. Oh yeah, I gotta do the classic high five from Ryan, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Most definitely. So so yeah, you you've run this a million times. How do you feel about that? How do you feel about that run? I felt really good actually. Uh, I they recently buffed uh, the lightning because uh, I kind of like uh, was a, a very vocal person of like, oh man, like lightning just feels really bad. <laughs> but the devs listen. <laughs> the devs listen though, and like they they made it easier to track enemies and stuff. Here we can see death trying to go on vacation and gets uh, we get blocked. Oh no! So <laughs> <laughs> will death ever get to go on vacation? I suppose you can. It's up to you. Find out on um, <laughs> March twenty second when the game will be fully released for PC and Switch. Correct. Yeah, that's right. Awesome. Uh, it'll be on Steam and uh, Nintendo Switch for sure. Perfect. Well, do you have any uh, shout outs or comments you'd like to leave our viewers with, Ryan, before we head over to the next game? Yeah, thank you so much. Um, I just want to thank you, like everyone at uh, GDQ, for like in inviting me over. I really do appreciate it. It's my first time here. Absolutely. Um, want to shout out the Haiti speedrun community. So, uh, Alien and Boreem for even getting me into uh, speedrunning in general. Uh, you guys are awesome. I want to shout out my babe Jody. Uh, she uh, raised a lot of money for a local charity here, and I can't be more proud of her. So, uh, really proud of you. And um, yeah, just a shout out to you if you're watching on uh, YouTube. Leave a comment, you know, and uh, <laughs> say hi. What do you What do you think about having a nice death so far? And uh, chat. Thank you so much for uh, for you know sticking around and checking out Have a Nice Death. I hope it was a pleasant experience, and I hope to see you again. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for being here, Ryan. Um, 
I put I posted the link to Ryan's Twitch channel in the chat. So if you did have fun uh, watching, have a nice Seth. Make sure you follow Ryan on Twitch. And uh, yeah, but we are going to take a quick break. But before we do, I just want to give a huge shout out to all of our supporters, your subs, Prime Gaming subs, gift subs, and bits cheered here on the Games Done Quick Twitch channel do help support the GDQ Hotfix, including this Showtime capsule. So please consider subscribing if you do enjoy your daily dose of GDQ speedrunning. And don't forget, SGDQ 2023 is coming up in person May 28th to June 4th in Minneapolis, Minnesota. If you're interested in attending the event, registration is now open until May 3rd, and off-site volunteer submissions are open from now until March 22nd. So uh, you can go to gamesdonequick.com for more information on that. But we will be right back with the spirit and the mouse, so stay tuned. All right, everybody, welcome back to the GDQ Hotfix. If you are just tuning in, I am your host, Smooth Operative, and you are watching Time Capsule. Tonight, we are continuing our journey through games from just last year, 2022, and up next is The Spirit and the Mouse. So please welcome our next runner, Jake Fedora. Hi, Jake. Hey, how's it going? It's going well. We're so happy to have you here. Um, how about you give our lovely viewers a little introduction? All right. Hello, everybody. I'm Jake Fedora15, and this is Spirit and the Mouse. It's a adventure indie game to, um, that came out in September of last year. We're obviously going to be playing as the Mouse in the Spirit and the Mouse, and our job is just going to be go around the town and collect happiness as fast as possible. Aw, I like that. <laughs> Well, yeah, whenever you're ready, uh, Jake, feel free to give us All the right. countdown. All right, we're going to get going in three, two, one, go. Best of luck. Thank you. All right, guys, unfortunately, these, uh, there is a little bit of an unskippable cutscene coming up right away. So right off the bat, we're going to be watching some beautiful cinematics. <laughs> Hopefully give us some insight as to what the game is about. Yeah, yeah. So, starting off, we get the story of this little sheltered village, villagers in their warm home, but a ominous storm is looming outside. As you can tell, it's raining. But unfortunately, everybody's not in a nice, dry, warm place. We start off meeting our hero, the mouse, running from her, running for her life from a mouse's mortal enemy. But oh, luckily, that cat, luckily that cat, uh, <laughs> does not have any interest in chasing us any further past that pile of junk. How lucky for us, right? <laughs> but. <laughs> She finds herself alone in this village, and her life is about to take an unexpected turn. So now the gameplay is starting. We just got to get through this first little section. We got to listen to some of the humans talking. One of my favorite conversations, or one of my favorite little results of the thunderstorm that recently happened is coming up right here. I find this very funny. I'm going to be going through it fast, of course, but I will tell y'all what it is. This guy, this lightning storm must be magic or something because his wiring got crossed just by an electric storm. Because that poor gentleman, every time he opens his refrigerator door, the doorbell rings. So oh, no. Can y'all... <laughs> Could y'all imagine that? Every time you open your refrigerator door, <laughs> ding dong. <laughs> that, that would be quite annoying for those of us that pace the kitchen and then open the fridge only to discover that nothing has changed <laughs> for the uh, first time I, we opened it. I do that all the time myself, so I know exactly what you mean. Mm -hmm. So this, this next human we've come across, uh, she sees it as raining. She wants to get her laundry off her drying line, but unfortunately her window gets stuck. And the wind blows away her favorite scarf. So her favorite scarf now is on top of that 
very tall city hall building on top of that very, very tall metal tower. But Mouse has an idea. He's like, I can get this star for this human and bring it back to her. Very so kind of Mouse. We are getting our first look at the main hub area of the game, South Square. It's Santa, Santa Clara Town Square. So we get a nice little panoramic view. There's a nice statue. The, there's some houses, maybe a business or two. Oh well, yeah. Mouse is like, yeah, I got this. I got this. And one of my favorite things about this game is about to be introduced right here. There is a cute little squeak function, so you can squeak all you want just by pushing a button. So. That's fun. <laughs> Love that. <laughs> I won't be squeaking too much because somebody might get... Uh, <laughs> I mean, everybody might love it, but everybody might be like, uh, will you please stop squeaking? Honestly, y'all should be glad I'm not the one running this because it'd be like, squeak, squeak, <laughs> squeak, squeak. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, that's one vote for as many squeaks as we can get in. There is a squeak counter at the end of the game if we want to try to get as many squeaks as possible in. We at could, the end of the credits, there we, is a counter that tells you how many times you squeak. <laughs> we could also do, like, victory squeaks after every level. Yes, victory squeak. Yes. <laughs> All right. Put in chat how many squeaks we should do every time we get a piece of happiness. I think also it might be fun to guess just the total. Like, how many times, chat, do you think we will squeak in this game? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's good. That's good. I know it's a long run. We've got, you know, an hour and, and 40 or so minutes, so think hard. <laughs> but unfortunately, that's not just any old metal pole. Bad news for our friend here. That's actually the lightning rod that protects City Hall. Oh no. And there just happens to be a lightning storm, so I don't need to... Well, let's just say, zap. You better squeak on out of there quick. <laughs> yeah. Mouse has been struck. R.A.P., our friend. Miraculously, we do survive. Oh, nice. Miraculously, we do survive. And we're about to meet the spirit part, part of the spirit and the mouse. Unfortunately... <laughs> I like to refer to the spirit as my, uh, some kind, sometimes I call him a bonehead, sometimes I call him a dork, I, I mean, I've called him a lot of different things, but, uh, yeah, this is the spirit part of the title. Yeah, we're about to be introduced to Lumion, and I'll go more into Lumion when we get through with this little cutscene here, but... I mean, just look at this face when he comes on screen. Just look at this face and say that this guy isn't going to cause us a little hot headache. Because he is our little headache. Sure. A little troublemaker. <laughs> He's more like the taskmaster troublemaker, so, yeah. one of the devs. Yeah, I, I will show that off near the end. Don't worry. Don't worry. I'll show that off near the end. 
I just recently found that mouse hole myself. But yeah, uh, Lumion is what is called, what in this universe is called a spirit guardian. And his job is to keep the humans happy. Now, that lightning bolt was not just a normal bolt of lightning. That lightning bolt was actually Lumion himself coming down from the realm of the spirit guardians. Ooh. So... Since he struck us, he is now trapped in the lightning rod. So he can't leave that lightning rod. But also, we have a portion of his powers. That's why we were able to enter that plug box and become an electric current and zip up that wire. So, we have been deputized deputized as spirit guardian in training for the evening. So now Lumion's gonna call us up and like, hey mouse, uh, you see that cafe right there? There's some humans in there that need your help. So uh, get busy, do your job. I wanna go home. I love, you know, I never came up with I just recently started calling when he uh, telepathically communicates with you a uh, call, but I never uh, thought about what to call it. Oh, I think you just explained it. He, he's telepathically communicating with, with Mouse. Yeah. Anyway, our first two customers that need our help are the elderly gentleman, Michael, and this uh, waiter at this restaurant, Lewis. Lewis and Michael, they want to watch their favorite TV show. It's the season finale, after all. They got to see what happens. But, unfortunately, the cable's out. Uh-oh. Don't you hate that when... The, don't you hate when that happens, chat? Uh, nowadays, it's like if your internet goes out, you're watching your show, buffering, buffering. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, yeah, your favorite show's coming on, and you want to watch it, and then nothing. Nothing. So, yeah. So we're about to be introduced to these things called kibbling boxes. These kibbling boxes are what really work the power around here. We can think that it's like human electricity and all that, but, you know, these things invented by the maker himself... Uh, really run the show around here. So anyway, we're also going to be introduced to these little underlings of the Spirit Guardians called Kiblings. They're these cute little electric ent entities right here. And they're going to be the main things we have to help in order to get our happiness. So as soon as Lumion will stop talking to us, we can move on. This first guy is Key Cable. Key Cable's job is, well, he's working on the antenna dishes. So the restaurant can have their TV back. So what Key Cable needs us to do is go around and turn, or aim these three antenna dishes at the main satellite that's on top of the building we are on now. So we're going to run around and help with that. He's going to turn on that cable box for us, thank goodness. That way we can get back up here easy later. But Mouse is a Pikachu clone, let's be honest. So <laughs> Aww. She, she can just shock things whenever she wants to at will. This is Key Post. He's not really doing anything to help bring the cable back necessarily, but his job is, as his name would imply, he's he's in charge of the mail. 
Uh, five houses unfortunately had their mail blown away. So Key Post wants us to go around and, you know, pick up that mail for the people that lost their mail. So, yeah. Mouse is doing so many kind things for the town. Love that. Yeah. I mean, even if she wasn't a spirit guardian, she would want to help people because, you know, that whole scarf thing, and she just loves to help people. Also, yeah. when we go upstairs, we're also going to try to stay in the middle because running up this ramp-like thing is faster than climbing the stairs. There's not mi there's not really any tricks or anything in this game. There is little time save stuff you can do, kind of like that, but... We know of a couple of things that could potentially, potentially be used for something, but we haven't really found a way to use it yet. So yeah, we're getting different stories, like this particular mailbox here is getting buy one, get one free coupons. I mean... Who don't like coupons, right? That first uh, mailbox we went to got the dreaded taxes. Gotta love those taxes, right? It's coming up soon, my friends. <laughs> it, it, it really is. Get your taxes done, chat. I don't really remember what the normal city mail had, because I haven't read this in a while, obviously, but... So, um, Jake, I'm curious, since you started running this game, I know you said that it's not like super glitch heavy or anything. Have you optimized the route a lot since your first, you know, beginnings with it? Yeah, we've changed up some things for sure. Um, we mainly uh, lined up all the kibling stuff and the different boxes to where course they're in a better order and we've gotten some of this uh like we just picked up what's called energy there energy is how you activate the kibling box we've worked on how much energy we need to get and stuff like that so yeah we've optimized like mostly order of what order to do things. Oh, okay, so it's kind of like open. You can do things in any order you want to. Yeah, at, when we go to the second area, uh, North Town, there will be four boxes in that area, and you can do those in any order you wish. Now, this first one works out pretty well there because um, you saw that I activated Key Cable turned one of his antenna dishes, then did all of key posts, and then finished up key cable. So we didn't have to jump off this roof, come back up on this roof, do the mail, and then just come back up on this roof. So stuff like that is uh, working good for us. All right, Chad. Do we ever see a number about how many squeaks we should do whenever we collect a piece of happiness? I think everybody's got a number in mind, and maybe they haven't shared it, but they, they know. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> okay, I see how it is. <laughs> I'm joking. But yeah, this is our first kibbling box complete. So we're about to turn back on the cable for the two gentlemen that want to watch the season finale of their favorite show. Is the show or the type of show ever specified? Um, I think it's a soap opera, to be honest with you. I, oh, think, okay. that's hint I think it's hinted. They, they like don't, the drama. They actually don't ever come out and say it, but I think it's hinted. They'll never admit they watch soap operas. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I can't do that. Oh, yeah, for sure, for sure. Now, Mr. Michael don't mind admitting it because he uh, he wants to watch it. But Lewis over here, he knows a lot about this show. He knows a lot about it. 372 squeaks. 
Okay, I'll just squeak. All I can squeak on my way back to talk to <laughs> our taskmaster, Lumion. How about that? There's another hundred <laughs> or so more, and it'll be fine. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, yeah. But uh, Lewis there, he knows a lot about the show. And his excuse for knowing about it, he's like, my brother told me, I promise, my brother told me. And everybody's like, mm-hmm. Yeah, sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, now Lumion calls us up like, you know, Mouse, I need you to come back and talk to me real quick. So, yeah, can you do me a favor? Or like, sure, boss. Why not? We'll see later why that irritates me a little bit, but no, I won't spoil that for now. <laughs> So yeah, we're gonna run back and talk to our friend slash pain in the neck, Lumion. He is very rude to us at the start of the game, to be fair. But spoiler alert, he does have redemption. <laughs> oh yeah, you were getting super yelled at when we first met Lumion. Oh yeah, oh yeah. He's like... <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You know, if he was rhyming, uh, I think he'd sound like Grunty from Banjo. Any any Banjo fans? Like, I, I really love the impression you're doing right now. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I accidentally talked to him twice. He wants us to go see this Kibling, uh, by the fountain. We don't have to do that. That's only for 100%. You might have seen these blue light bulbs laying around, and we just walked past them. Yeah, those are, those are for the shop in this game, where if you have so many light bulbs, you can buy different power-ups and stuff. But, like I said, that's only for 100%. None of the things that you get in the shop are really that useful for any percent. So now we're heading to something that a lot of people know all too well. My split for this particular box is called Homework Percent. So we're he heading to our friend Sophie. Sophie is on her final paper, her thesis, before she graduates. But unfortunately, she's very tired, and every time she goes to save and finish it, every time she goes to save and finish it, well, the power blinks. That must and be so she, stressful, trying to do your thesis and the power keeps going out. I think it's due tomorrow, too, or something like that. I hope it's really not due tomorrow, but it might be. I don't know. Shoutouts to all of our procrastinators. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> we see you. So, yeah, here we are at the second Gibbling Box. Also, I'd like to uh, point out that these Kibling boxes are, like, dapper dressers. Look at that bow tie. I mean, come on. They got it. Very dapper. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. I do have some bad news, though. We're going to the worst Kibling's in my opinion, in the game. Because they are the biggest form of RNG in this game. Ah. It's, it's no run killing or anything, but it could take a few minutes. Now, I did a practice a little earlier. They were pretty nice to me, but this is GDQ, so who knows what's going to happen. Very true. They're going to be like, 
Hey, this is your first time on GDQ. We're going to make your life heck. <laughs> But anyway, guys, I lovingly call these three the triplets. I don't really know their names. I don't care to learn them either because, well, I don't like them. But they're not just going to go back to the Kibling box. No, that would be too easy. They're portrayed as younger Kiblings, so they want to play hide-and-seek. Only problem with hide-and-seek is... You can only miss three times. Now, they will show you where they're hiding by emitting some electricity, like right there. We know there's run. So, uh. so far, they're being pretty nice. I, I cannot complain about this. But the best part is, you not only have to do it once, but they want you to play again. This time in a bigger field. They want you to play in the lower garden this time. Luckily for us, lower garden is a little more consistent. Like, there's always one in this light bulb right here. Every time, there's always one in there. So that is consistent. And the other two, now they like to hide. Wait, is there one in there? Yeah. I don't know how a broom is holding a kibling, but I guess it's like a metal broom, or maybe it's not even a broom. It could just be like the metal bits that tie the ends together. Yeah, maybe. So it forms so the broom. I got one on the stairs. I haven't got one on the stairs in quite a while. But that was a pretty good triplets, actually. I cannot be mad at that triplets. I'm okay with this. Oh my goodness, that'd be so good. Hide and squeak. That would be so good. Alright, these next two, I, I, I like them. This is Key Coach and Key Sprint. Key coach and key sprint. What they're doing is training for a race where the goal of the race is to break the sound barrier. Key sprint can't quite do it by himself, though. So, what do you do with electricity but when it's running on empty, you give it a jump start. So, we're going to give key sprint a jump start. We have to shock him ten times, and then he'll be able to break the sound barrier. I'm ne nefarious for missing this, though. Because he can go whichever way he wants to. See, he can run right at you, and then he can just change. Now, look at Key Coach's face here. I love his facial expression. He's like... I love that face. My favorite face <laughs> in the whole game. I love that face. It's beautiful. It's amazing. But yeah. <laughs> I mean, his face is just like, I can't believe he actually did it. Now, I said that uh, the triplets are my they're the most annoying. I guess I should have clarified most annoying minigame. The most annoying Kibling to me is we're about to meet him. And his name, well, he, or it, I guess, is Keylearn. Keylearn is a know-it-all, but he loves riddles, so he's not just gonna go out and tell you what he wants. He's going to be like, okay, I want you to bring me the price of a dark beverage that's sold here in town. Of course, that's coffee. And he's like, how much does coffee cost? Luckily, this game lets you, if you already know it, put it in without actually having to go read it. 
So, shout outs to the developers for that. Oh, is it usually posted on like a sign or in the shop somewhere? Yeah, they're, okay. um, it's on the menu at back at the cafe. Then he's like, okay, what year was the well put in? And that is also on a memorial plaque. Back there, actually, where we were just was he sprint. So once you give him his two answers, he go back. He goes back to the box. So he's a very quick kibling. And that is the end of our second kibling box. I didn't point it out the first time either, but these kibling box, when you finish talking to them, it's so sad because. It's kind of like they're shutting down either for a very long time or forever or something because they say, goodbye, world. I mean, it's sad every time I read Aww. it. I'm like, oh, come on. Why'd you have to do that? <laughs> but yeah, now her power's fixed. That way she can... Uh, Finish her theses and actually get a good night's sleep because this poor thing is so tired. I think she's been working hard though. I think that's implied too. But yeah. Poor thing's got to finish typing it and then she's got to print it all. Then she's got to bind it and then eventually she's got to put it in and then, you know. It's a you lot got a lot of work, of work to still to do. Yeah, it's a lot of work. So there's our second piece of hat. Our boy Lumion calls us up and like, hey, I need you to come back and see me again. But then this time he's like, hey, you know, I have some power. I can just teleport you back here. First time I saw that, I'm like, last time you made me run. When you could have just zapped me back to where you're at. I was so mad at this, <laughs> this guy. I'm like, you couldn't have done that last time? Really? <laughs> I'm like, come on, man. But he is about to give us a new ability also, so. And this one actually has a in-game use, but it also has a thing I discovered for speedrunning as well. It's not going to help us run faster or anything, but... You see, every time I jump off the building, most of the time I grab the ledge. Well, he's about to give us this ability to temporarily transform ourselves into a current of electricity so we can like walk through wire fences and stuff. If you're in that form, you will not grab the ledge. So you're gonna see me try to remember to turn into a bolt of electricity every time I jump off of something. That way ledge, grab it, ledge grabs are a thing of the past. Would so you say that head. it's, oh sorry, go ahead. <laughs> uh, I was just gonna say we're heading to Northtown, go ahead. Okay, I was gonna say, is it an easy transition to make? How you mean? I just mean between like blood jumping and then suddenly you have this ability that you get to use now. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Nice. Nothing to it. It's like whoop. I mean, occasionally you can like get the right angle and stuff. If you go off the building just right, you won't grab the ledge, but. Unfortunately, I didn't manage to do it either of the two times we jumped off that giant building. Yeah, no worries. But, yeah. I mean, it's not much time. It's like a second. So, but hey, cut out those seconds, right? <laughs> when, when you can, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, now we got this long little short leg mouse run over to, oh yeah, oh y'all some squeaks. Sorry about that. <laughs> Thank you.
Lumian's like, oh yeah, I heard that North Town is bigger. Ha 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 ha. Every time I read that, I read it in like a super villain voice. Yes, did I tell you that North Town is bigger? <laughs> <laughs> Jake becoming the unexpected boss of the game. <laughs> yeah, yes, yes. No, it's on uh, Switch and PC. It's on both. And you're playing the Switch version, correct? Yes, I'm on the Switch version. Oh, okay, nice. All right, so now we are here in North Town. We're going to visit... Julian and his big sister, Juliet, in the lamp shop. Now, Julian, he's a little brother. He's tired of being at work all night with his big sister. He wants to... He wants to go home, and, you know, she's tired of working too, but the power's been flickering because of that thunderstorm. So Julian convinces his sister that there's a ghost, and then she hits the deck, and then he jumps on top of her. Oh but yeah, goodness. so now they think there's a ghost in the lamp shop. And, of course, you know, craziness unfolds. And I honestly think there's a ghost living in my microwave, because anytime I open it, the light just flickers for a moment, for like a few moments, and then stops. Nice. Oh, yeah, my, my microwave definitely gets possessed from time to time. Sometimes there's nothing in, and it'll just start running. Oh, oh no. Like, we're like, huh? <laughs> but, yeah, here we are, kibbling box number three. We got to pay him his 30 energy so he can wake up. <laughs> The ghost like hot. The ghost like hot. <laughs> hey, he might. He might. Very possible. All right. Before we do work on any kibbling stuff, we're going to first activate this wire. We're going to go right back up the wire, and uh, we're going to go see Key Senior. Unfortunately, Key Senior walks a little slow, but hey, he don't walk too much, so that's okay. I do think it's strange that every time he talks, though, I hear, Not the baby! I know that's not what he's really saying, but that's what I hear. So he's got these three terminal things he wants to turn on. And just like the e-learn puzzle stuff we already have we already know the codes and all that good stuff i just have to hope that i do not rush and push a too soon but yeah first code down and then he you know he does his thing <laughs> I can't help it. That's what I hear. That's what I hear. I've heard that from day one, and I can never unhear it. <laughs> y'all are welcome, too, if y'all can never unhear it also. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if any of you are going to be picking this game up uh, from watching this speedrun. I'm, I'm kind of interested in playing it myself. Oh, yeah, it's a great game. I definitely recommend it. Even if you don't want to, you know, speedrun it, it's still a really fun, casual game as well. Oh, no. <laughs> yes. <laughs> sorry, not sorry. 
Sorry, not sorry. But yeah, for sure. It's a really fun game. It's a cute little game, and I definitely recommend it. But yeah, E Senior will now go back to the box. And we will go meet up with our next Kibling. Unfortunately, our next Kibling is a coward. More on that in a second. So yeah, now we gotta run all the way over here. I used to do this one first and then go around to, um, talk to Key Senior and then do his quest, but I've, I've rerouted it because I remembered that that plug is in the front of the shop, and since this one ends at the front of the shop, I'm like, you know, we can get back to the kibbling box a lot quicker if we do it this way. I'm like, hey, stupid. <laughs> Jake, would you say that the community for the speedrun is very big in this game? Like, do y'all help each other out, or, or what's that like? Um, we do help each other out, but we have not very many runners, actually. There's, like, two of us. Oh, I see. Well, it's a, it's a newer game, so there's still time. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's still plenty of time. So, Key Cry, our friend here... Heecry is running from us because when we first got here, Heecry thought we were a ghost. Because Heecry was listening to the siblings in the shop talk about a ghost. But don't let me point out this real quick. Don't y'all just love uh, Keycry's teddy mouse? I mean, come on, it's so cute. Teddy mouse Aww. is so cute. Teddy mouse, hi. We're going to need some Spirit and the Mouse merch now. We need that Teddy Mouse. Yeah. Come on, guys. I mean, the devs are in chat, so... Just a few wink-winks. So yeah, now that um, we're through here, that kibbling box will be activated. <laughs> Teddy Mouse now. <laughs> I don't have a better name for it. That's just all what I've always called it, Teddy Mouse. So if anybody's got a better idea... I honestly think it's appropriate. It does look like a little teddy bear, but it's a mouse, so teddy mouse seems good. Yeah. All right, this time we do not have to go back and see Lumion, and we can continue doing all the work. Thank goodness, right? Oh yeah, first we gotta talk to Juliet and Julian and they're like, hey, the ghost is gone. <laughs> so we're gonna grab this piece of happiness right here. Ooh, Theodore the Mouse, Teddy for short. That's not a bad idea. That's not a bad idea at all. Alright, so we say goodbye to Julian and Juliet. And head to the pizzeria. I hope that doesn't make anybody too hungry. Unfortunately, right. we're not making any pizza. I have not eaten a single thing today, so pizza sounds amazing. 
<laughs> so this is Lisa. Lisa's been having a night. Poor thing. She's tired. Her boss is at home asleep. The patio heaters are out. The sign is broken, advertising the place. And the menu has blown away. So she's having a night, poor thing. Oh my gosh, it really sounds like it. And best part is, like I said, her boss is at home asleep. And on top of that, um, and to add fuel to the fire, there's been so many power outages when she's trying to call the 24-hour electric company, all she gets is a busy signal. So, like, 30-minute guarantee, we're gonna get to you, we promise. Uh, yeah, about that. About that. Hello, world. I also love when the Kibling boxes say that. I have to do that at least once every run, just say, hello, world. Kind of like I would imagine the Kibling boxes, boxes <laughs> doing. It's like, I gotta do it, I mean. So uh, yeah, uh, our first stop is our friend E Cold here. E Cold was trying to fix the uh, heaters when you know E Cold slipped, and you know he's just hanging out. He's just hanging out. I mean, he's got his toboggan on, so I think he's good. I mean, but he's a scaredy cat and he can't jump. We'll, uh, help him later. Right now, we're gonna see Key Clumsy. Now, Key Clumsy lives up to the name. Key Clumsy was trying to fix the sign. When all of a sudden, the most beautiful firefly passed by. So captivated by it, flipped. Bounced around the neighborhood and ended up in that jam. Ended up in that gym. So. Of course. Mouse being mouse. Her job is to unjam the jam. This one's pretty simple though. Just a boulder puzzle. That out of the way. And then the best part of the key clumsy. You shock and you win. And then key clumsy fixes the pizza sign and agrees to go back to the kibling box. But he's not giving up the grate because he is scared of what will happen if he takes it off. All right, now we're going to address the menu thing. This is the closest thing to food we have, guys. So I'm going to talk about food for a minute. But we're not making any food or anything like that. This isn't Ratatouille, so... Okay, no, I, I just thought of something else. We will be talking about food one more time. And that's it, I promise. Don't get too hungry on me. All right, first... We need to get the price for a margarita pizza, but once again, like every other time, we already know the price. Margarita pizza is honestly one of my favorites. It's super good. But the next pizza, I don't know how this would taste. Now we need the price of an avocado banana pizza. Okay, a more interesting choice. <laughs> you gotta remember, this is a little French town, so who knows what they eat. Avocado and banana, anybody? Mm 
So Key Scribe, our friend here, has now reprinted the menu and we'll go back to the Kibling box. Now let's get Key Skull old unstuck. We gotta move this waiter cart. I'm gonna be very careful how I do this. You don't know how many times I thought I was in the right position, but it went backwards on me. It's kind of dumb. This thing can be uh, a little finicky from time to time. All right, so unfortunately, Key Cold can still not brave enough to jump, even though he's immortal and If fall won't happen, so we're just gonna, you know, give Key Cold some help. Zap. Oh my gosh, he's just going right down. <laughs> so he's like, help me, I'm going to die. Oh, 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 wait, no, I'm good, I'm good. Oh, wait, yeah, nothing to worry uh -uh. about, Key Cold. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> Everything's fine, nothing to worry about here. But yeah, now the heaters are fixed, and we are ready to finish up Lisa's quest. So yeah, that little spark that sometimes I don't like to see because it travels way too long goes back to the generator. And it goes back to normal. Open for business? Yeah. <laughs> nice. Even though this late at night, I, I don't think ever anybody wants pizza i mean i mean i can i can give her anybody's order if anybody has an order right now i mean i can talk to her i'm right here so anybody want anything i mean i know she's about to take a nap but hey money's money right and the sign is still on so hey if you I want mean, something yeah. now's the time yeah. oh just kidding she fell asleep <laughs> oh yeah like i said but you ring that bell i mean the sign is still on come on All right, Lumion's calling us up now. Wait, right. yeah, go ahead. Good job, Mouse. Keep it up. All right. Now, oops, I fell off. I always fall off these stairs, though. At least once. Um, I can't remember what I call this split, but this poor gentleman is Paul. Paul has a terrible cold. He's very hungry. He has a frozen, frozen key. And his, uh, electric, you know, I don't know, it's like an electric oven, something like that. Might even be a, uh, air fryer type deal. I don't know for sure, but anyway, point is, it's not working well. He tries to bite it, just tries to bite into it while it's frozen, because he doesn't feel good and he's hungry. When he almost cracks his tooth and cries out in pain, he also, um, 
Then he's like, hey, I have this cordless hair dryer. So he is currently, currently trying to unthaw a frozen <laughs> quiche with a cordless hair dryer. You know, you gotta give Paul props for trying, right? I mean, you got to give him props for <laughs> at least creative. giving an effort. Yeah. I mean, A for effort probably is not enough. Oh, yeah. Have y'all noticed that this particular Kibling box is missing its bow tie? But more importantly, it's also missing an eye. Yeah, the storm did not treat this Kibling box very well at all. So, yeah. But... Here's the best news of all. We are going to see my personal favorite Kibling right now. So I always enjoy this part. We're going to go see Key Dive. He's a bumbling inventor. I don't know why he's my favorite, but he is my favorite. I mean, look at that face. I mean, come on. Who could not like that face? That is cute. But yeah. Key Dive, he's my boy. And Key Dive uh, won't is going to task us with sending random pieces of metal his way. It is random, unfortunately, so you're gonna get a different pattern each time, as well as a different denomination, like one spring, one bolt, and then five coils of wire. And you gotta do this three times. But each time he's going to build a better harpoon. What he's doing is he's fishing out pieces of that kibbling box that are stuck in the mud at the bottom of the river. So, unfortunately, since he's a bumbling inventor, his stuff breaks. Gonna require some trial and error to get this one yeah. correct. Yeah. Unfortunate, but hey, he's our boy anyway. It, he does make a bigger, better harpoon every time. He does make the bigger, better harpoon every time. And then it goes split again. He's like, all right. I know I got it this time. I know I got it this time. Worst part about this is it is random. And then he jumps back in the river, and he's like... Alright, I got the last piece. I'm out. I'm going to the box. So, hey. We'll talk to you later. We'll talk to you later. And you'll also notice that... I am not collecting any more energy that the Kiblings leave behind. We actually have enough energy now. We won't need any more for the rest of the run. We only have to pay for one more Kibling box. This is Key Clean. Uh, Key Clean is also looking for parts of the Kibling box, except Key Clean's gonna search in the trash. Because humans come along and threw away some of the parts of the box. Unfortunately, Key Clean does not leave up, live up to the Key Clean's name. Certainly because not. <laughs> this is not clean at all. Bill's trash everywhere. He's like, hey, Mouse, can you, like, clean that up while I'm doing something more important? Like, looking for this part. I'm like... Okay. And I think I just said like so many times it's not even funny, but it is what it is. There's four trash cans in all. 
Unfortunately, they saved this best one for second instead of last because there's only four pieces of trash that come out of this particular can. And the spread of trash and how many pieces there are is consistent. It's the same every time, so... That is good. Yeah, clean up after key clean a little bit. And I mean, I have to respect key clean for not leaving litter around, but you gotta dig so deep. I mean, Lumian's already breathing down our neck to get done already. He wants to go back to his house. Eh, could I've been reading it wrong all this time, that's all. Makes a lot more sense for sure. Sometimes I can't read. <laughs> no other excuse than that, to be honest with you. So now we run back to the kibbling box. We got up the stairs. Let's go. Reading is hard. I guess, but I mean, if I'm not reading. Trying to read fast, I'm better at it, but Well, I mean you you already know what's going on, so <laughs> Yeah, I'm just saying. I've been calling that thing key clean since September, so I mean, in my defense though, that G does kinda need to close its belly a little more. Oh right, you were mixing up the, the... CG, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, now Paul has his power back, so I hope he enjoys that key. Paul put down the hair dryer. <laughs> he hasn't put two and two together the power sticks <laughs> yet. We gotta go talk to him first. Have a conversation uh, with that man. Unfortunately, because if he spawned the happiness from way over there, it'd be a lot better for us. But, you know, hey. He's like, forget the hair dryer. Then just sit over his shoulder. He's like, Whoop. And then, of course, he sings a little, little song, and I usually just hum along with it. Eesh, 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 eesh. Eesh is pretty fantastic, so, you know what, go off, Paul. I'm not a fan myself, but hey. Oh well, no. <laughs> hey, but hey I don't own. mind help I don't mind helping him make a key. It is party after all. For sure, for sure. Alright, chat. Who likes quiche? If you do, what kind of quiche do you like? Because we're talking about quiche. Honestly, I like the spinach mushroom feta kind of quiche. Personally. Not bad, not bad. Maybe throw a little bacon on there. I don't know. Oh, oh there you go. <gasps> All right, our next friend is uh, Eugene. He is an artist. Eugene, uh, he wants to paint. He just has to paint. But unfortunately, like everybody else, he's having electricity problems. But he's also having the problem that he has a headache because the pharmacy sign next door keeps flickering. 
and iridescent green lights flickering on and off will tend to give somebody a headache. So yeah, poor guy not only has a headache and the want to paint, but you know, he's just got to paint. Do you paint, uh, Jake, or do you have any hobbies outside of speedrunning? Um, I can be artsy. I prefer, uh, like, I mean, if I could have my way in what kind of art I like, I like metal work. I'm oh, not good okay. at it or anything, but so I like that. looking cool. at it. Yeah, you have to like weld the pieces together and maybe like yeah, some sculptures yeah. I, and I stuff. I find that really, really neat. I yeah. find that really, really neat. Agreed. But as for hobbies, mm, I don't really have that many hobbies, unfortunately. I mean, speedrunning is its own hobby, so there you go. Speedrunning, streaming, yeah. What is your uh, stream schedule like? Um, I stream most days, usually starting around 6.30 Eastern, and that's most of the time Monday through Saturday. Every now and then I'll change it up a little bit, but most of the time that's when you'll find me on Nice, yeah. Well, a shout out was given in the chat for Jake. So if you're interested in hanging out, then yeah, make sure you follow Jake Fedora 15 here on Twitch. Just, just a fair warning to anybody out there that does want to follow me, though. I'm a lot more random than this on my actual stream. So if you come into my stream, you'll hear random off the wall stuff. So just a fair warning. <laughs> But anyway, here's our next set of goofballs. This is Key Boss and Key Fix. Key Boss thinks he can fix anything. Key Fix believes he can fix anything. Where in reality, he can't fix anything. Damn. <laughs> so, he's a total poser, you know. So anyway, this is a very hard puzzle. You have to look at that little encode, encoded line that they give you, and you have to totally unscramble it and shock the letters in the order that it's written down to fix the sign. I'm like, if it was that easy, why didn't somebody do that before now? But no, we're waiting on the electric mouse. Always waiting on the electric glowing mouse. I mean, come on, guys. All right, this gentleman here, a uh, uh, key hack. He's a uh, he's a tall boy. That's really the only thing I know much about him because you don't spend that much time with him. He tries to send us on this wild goose chase to find these uh, clues as to what this code is, but fortunately, like every other time, we already know the code, so... I mean, it, just go on. <laughs> I know I don't treat that kibbling with... <laughs> and you are again, but, you know, he doesn't do much, and you spend, like, no time with him, so... So it's a little hello and goodbye. Yeah, basically. Hello, here's your code. Bye. We will get to see him one more time, but, uh, yeah. So do they so, say goodbye, world, every time, or? 
Yes, every Aww. time one of <laughs> the Kibling time. boxes uh, gives you that light bulb, they do say, Goodbye, world. And I feel sad every time I see that. Aww. And I'm like, is he, like, not going to wake up again? Or how does this work? He also gives you this little warning, uh, like, don't leave. Uh, well, I'm going to paraphrase what he says. I can't really remember what they say. But basically, don't leave a room without turning the lights off. You'll overwork the Kibling. Okay, you got to remember, the Kibling's power the Kibling box, which help power the electricity. Yes, at the... Um, whenever they, you first activate them, they do say, Hello, world! So you do get hello and goodbye out of them. All right, Lumion is going to call us back to the tower. Once again, he's going to teleport us. Thanks, boss. Appreciate it. And Lumion's like, all right, hand over the happy in this mouse. I got to get out of here. Lumion's got, got places to beat. Yeah, you know, I think he likes his job, but I think he'd rather be in the realm of the spirit guardians. Or... I don't know. Does Lumion ever make it back? I don't know. We'll have to wait. And see. <laughs> we'll have to find out. Lumion's trying to leave right now, actually. But Mouse is like, hold up, wait, 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 wait. Nope, nope, this ain't no good. You get back here. Get back here. And he's like, what? Someone else is, someone else needs help. What are you squeaking about? <laughs> you freak. Can we talk about this civilly? You haven't talked to me in a civilized <laughs> manner this whole game, dude. Oh my gosh. This is You're amazing. like, come on, man. Do your job, Mouse. And then he's like, fine, I'll unlock the door. And if we could clip behind this door somehow, and if we could actually activate this final area, even if we got behind the door, that would be so awesome. That would be amazing if we could do that. But I don't know if that'll ever happen. So who knows? We'll see. There's a, a bounty in it for anyone that wants to figure that one out, I'm sure. Well, none of us have talked about it, so who knows? Okay, well, it's time to get the wheels turning. I was messing around the other day. I managed to get Mouse or get Mouse's head in the wall. But unfortunately, the wall kicked me right back out. Like, <laughs> nope. That's how you know it's it's made to last. <laughs> that wall was like, uh, I don't think so. Oh no, this part of town is very beautiful. But yeah. For sure. This is West Residence. There's only one thing back here. It's Miss Rose's house. Miss Rose, like everybody else that we've met so far, has a problem. Hers isn't necessarily from the electric storm, though. 
turns out there's a meteor shower tonight and she wants to be able to watch it. Unfortunately, light pollution from the next town over is making it way too bright for her to see the meteor shower. Oh. So what to do about that? That is the question. And then Key Learn of all people would like, okay, what do you want to do about it? He's still not going to really help us. He's still going to try to give us a riddle and all that good stuff, but. But he does have the idea of contacting the Kiblings in the next town over. Yeah, it turns out there's Kiblings all over France and, like, not just in the little town of Santa Claire, but, yeah, even in the next town over. So they're all able to communicate with each other? Well, we're going to need a little bit of help. Okay. They can't. They can't just, you know, telepathically communicate like Lumion talks to us, so... We're gonna, you know, we kind of need of an, we need an inventive mind to help us construct something. And we only know one Kibling with the smarts to help us do that. That's right. We're going to see my boy, E Dive. His inventions may mess up, but. He's the only chance we got. He's the only chance we got. Now, Kiblings are on their break right now, so they're not in their normal places or in their Kibling box, so we gotta go around and to their, where they like to hang out on break and recruit them. So yeah. Now we have to unfortunately run back to Rose's house so we can talk to Key Dive again just so we can run back out here to start looking for our strike team, as they call it, to help us construct said item. And, yes, I have tried to recruit the other Kiblings without coming back and talking. Unfortunately, it does not work. But luckily, I, call, I lovingly call this Kibling Hunt. It doesn't take too long. The longest part about it is actually running from the... Th three different districts, because, yeah, we're going back to all the places we've been. North and east, and we're going to end up back in west. But, yeah. So we're going to get to see this game all over again. But I think all good games give you a... Or, you know, not... I mean, there's good games that don't, but give you a way to see their areas one more time. I think it's nice because, you know, obviously the devs worked really hard on this game and especially like the environment, right? That's what you're playing in. So to be able to explore it again, I think is always fun. For sure, for sure. And then I ran into a pole. Sorry, Mouse, I didn't mean to bing you in the face with a pole, but hey, you know, it was an accident, I promise. Don't turn off my power. I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't mean to. All right. Now that we got Key Glean, I guess is the name I just learned tonight. We're going to get Key Boss and Key Fix. And then we got to run back to East. Where we're going to get actually everybody else we need our first stop is going to be pick up key sprint and key coach we're actually going to meet 
We're gonna meet them on the steps. We'll run into Key Sprint right about here. Luckily, that's consistent. You can't miss that cycle. Just head right there as soon as you get in here. Now we're going to pick up the triplets. Y'all know how I feel about them. Luckily, there's no hide and seek this time, so no harm, no foul. But yeah, for some reason they're hanging out on this very tall building and... Just vibing, you know? Mm -hmm. They just hanging out and probably talking about how they want to play hide and seek with Mouse again and he's thinking if she overhears him. No, please, no. Oh wait, that's just me, my bad. <laughs> Our final stop is to pick up the cable. Our very first sibling that we were introduced to. And now, back to Roses. It's not any faster, but it looks kind of silly. So, um, you can run kind of like this. Kinda, it looks silly, but it's actually the same speed as walking normally. I have I have timed that. <laughs> I like this. You're kind of like slipping and sliding <laughs> around. <laughs> electric boogaloo. <laughs> yeah, electric boogaloo. <laughs> When I first saw how fast that looked, I'm like, you know, that looks faster than normal walking, unfortunately. It's about the same. I'm like, man, I thought I found a way to go faster. <laughs> hey, but you were putting in the effort, and that's great. Yeah, yeah. All right, the gang's all here. So many kiblings working together are unheard of. I know it's hard to believe we have met this many friends along our journey. I know, right? There's a lot of them. Some of them were more of a pleasure to work with than others, but hey, ain't that like at any job, though? Mm-hmm. <laughs> but yes, it is revealed to us what we are building now. A great intent. Oh yeah, shout outs to Mouse's hat. It's like awesome. It's also a metal detector, so you know. Not only is it a cool hat, it's also a metal detector, so. Super cute. Yeah. Very cute, very functional, all awesome. I used to think this was random, but turns out, no. The same amount of metal is in the same spot every time. So, when we found that out, that was amazing. I don't know if the spread is the same every time, though. I still don't know if with this person and making a mess, but hey, if you gotta make a mess, you gotta make a mess. All right. Unfortunately, Eagling takes our hat. But don't worry. I'm going to show off the secret hat mouse hole when we get through. We should have a little time to do that. So. Oh, yeah. We'll definitely have some time.
Now we're gonna work with Key Dive and the Triplets. This is the most helpful thing the Triplets have done. They're gonna offer us three parts of the scrap pile, and we just have to pick the right one that Key Dive asked for. Unlike last time, this is not random. It'll be the same part every time that Key Dive asked for in the same order. The only random piece is which one of the triplets have it. We're favoring the middle right now. But single pony get the left. I like Key Dive's face here too. He's like, oh. Super I don't know focused. where his eyes went, but hey. Oh wait, they're just closed. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a, it's like a, you know, something you do and you don't realize it when you're really focused, like chewing your tongue or <laughs> yeah, yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. But yes, the Great Antenna DX is now built. Now we have to power it. We are going to power it by playing some tennis. So Jake, that doesn't make any sense. I know, it doesn't make any sense. But we're going to use Key Sprint and Key Coach. Plus the game of tennis to power this mighty antenna. We just got a chop teaspoon. Now, this can be confusing too because sometimes you'll shock right next to him where it looks like it should hit and it won't count. Really sad. So yeah, we're gonna be doing this for, see, I shocked right next to him and, and that time it literally hit him. But since I missed twice in a row, I didn't get any extra power on that last pass. I think one more will do it. Yep, there it is. And here comes that face again. Here comes that face again. The key coach special. <laughs> Just the. <laughs> the key coach is <laughs> just telling him to slow down and slow down. And he's <laughs> like, I can't. Love that face. Probably my favorite thing. Yeah, meow, mouse is mouse and cute. Mouse is cute and all, but have we talked about that face? <laughs> that was a good impression, Jake. Maybe a key coach for Halloween. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it was Luigi last year. Oh snap! Okay. <laughs> Somebody in my chat did recommend I make a key dive helmet, helmet so. Oh, yeah. yeah, that would be really fun. All right, now that it's charged, it has to be calibrated. Yes, we must calibrate the great antenna DX. Say no, booming voice. Finally, somebody gets me. Luigi is the best brother. Don't, don't. And I will accept no other option. <laughs> and the thing, when I was younger, I chose Luigi as best just because he wears green. 
<laughs> is that your favorite color? It is. Nice. So yes, my Mario brother choice came down to, oh, I like green. He wears green. <laughs> Sometimes it's uh, just that simple. What can you say? <laughs> All right, now we are ready. We have to add one little last piece to the great antenna. And that is this old telephone. Ta-da! But instead of making the call himself, Key Dive gives Key Learn the telephone. Oh so, yes. Key Learn, when he calls the other town, is like, you know, I'm not going to tell you what we need. I'm going to give you a riddle. And then everybody's like, no time for that! But unfortunately, then the classic e-dive thing happens. The thing breaks. Oh no. But, just before it broke, the message was delivered. So the key, the kiblings in the next town over, do turn down the lights just enough for Rose to see the meteor shower. Aww. So we get to enjoy a few seconds of meteor shower. Jake, I'm not sure if I asked you, but what is it that got you interested in running this game? Oh, just when I played it casually. Okay. Like, you know, this game is... It, it's cute. My, yeah. my, my uh, chat accused me of kind of, sort of, maybe, possibly starting to work on a route as soon as I played it on the first day it was out. So. Oh, okay. So they were already, you know, like, egging you on? So, do, oh, you, yeah. do you have other speed games in your repertoire? Um, none currently. This okay. is the only active one I have. But I have run other stuff in the past. Like, I saw something about Stray in chat earlier. I have run Stray and um, a couple of others. Nice. Yeah, we have a lot of stray fans in the chat. I think we were at some point trying to figure out what was the more adorable game, <laughs> this one or stray. <laughs> Not to compare yeah. them. I'm sure they're very different, but both beautiful games. For sure, for sure. So now this is actually our last piece of happiness that we have to collect. We are almost done. I'm not going to lie, my estimate was a little high, but that was for nervousness factor. Oh, yeah. Turns out I didn't need deal. it. <laughs> and, Jake, you said this is your first time on Hotfix? It is. That's awesome. Jesus. My Thank voice cracked. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate you running this and showing it off the game to everyone, so... Well, I appreciate y'all having me on. Definitely. <laughs> but, yeah. Lumion's like, all right, come back one more time, Mouse. Unfortunately, Lumion does not zap us back this time. Unfortunately, he does not zap us back. But that's a good thing because this is a chance for me to show off that little secret hat. 
tidy mouse hole that the developer put in chat earlier. So oh, yeah. if you look right here, there is this mouse hole. If you go in said mouse hole, you'll pop out with a hat on. Our first hat is a cheese head. Aww. If do you go you, back in... <laughs> do you get to wear these all around the game if you so choose? I would assume so, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I've never done it, but... A little French parade. Hello. All right, let's, let's go in one more time and see what we come out with. Oh, well, that one's classy. Yep, there we go. <laughs> uh, I think that one's my hat right there, folks. Yep. Pretty, pretty darn close. Yep, yep. I, I think that's it. All right, let's go talk to you again. <laughs> All right, Lumion's all on like. All right, Mouse. You brought the kiblings together. You helped them work good together. I have been a real jerk to you throughout this whole game. And I'm genu genuinely sorry about that. And he does really feel bad about some of the stuff he's put us through. I believe. It's just like, you know, if you get, if you want to say goodbye to the Kiblings, go ahead. Unfortunately, this is a speed run. So, did you finish all your business? We did. Do the Kiblings have much to say? Uh, if you do decide to go say goodbye to everyone, um, I can't remember. I have done it before, or talked to some of them. I think they did have a little bit of dialogue, but that's been a few months. Uh, so. Yeah, since you did that. No worries. So, Lumion's gonna leave now. He's gonna blast off. And time will be soon. Not quite yet, but it'll be within four or so minutes, something like that. Unfortunately, Lumion, there's something wrong with Lumion. He couldn't get back to the sky. His powers are failing. So, Mouse is going to be Mouse. I know what you're thinking. Don't you do it. Don't do it. You won't survive the fall. Don't do it. So, Mouse shocks Lumion. Lumion's catapulted off into the Spirit Guardian realm. And Mouse plummets back to the building. And the light is fading from Mouse. When I first saw this, I'm like, mm. Aww. But just when it looks like it's all over, the Creator intervenes. Don't be afraid. This is not the end for you. Using the power of happiness, or what looks like happiness, Mouse is transformed into a full-time spirit guardian. The Mouse will get to keep her electric powers, do what she loves, in helping all of the people She'll be a full-time guardian, and time is, like, very, very soon. As soon as I hit Y to ascend into the sky, but first, 
the maker is going to actually name Mouse. You cannot be called Mouse for the rest of your existence. And then he has Mouse talk to him a little bit and then names her Lila. Aww. But we cannot call her Mouse anymore. She is Lila. And this is about to be time as soon as I hit Y to head to the sky. So that is time. GG. Aw, Lila. This game was amazing. Thank you so much, Jake, for showing this off. Of course. Um, do you have I any? I had a blast. Oh, of course. Uh, us too. I think everyone was chilling. The spirit and the mouse. Wow, what a game. Do you have any uh, comments or shout outs you'd like to give before we wrap up uh, tonight's episode? Yeah, yeah. Um, shout outs to all or the developers that are in chat. I know they're in chat. I've seen them a couple of times. So shout outs to them. Their game is awesome. Also, shout out to the other runner, Abra. And shout outs to anybody else that had anything to do with this game. And all of you that's planning on playing this game in the future. Hope y'all enjoy it. Nice. Well, thank you again so much, Jake, for showing this off. I, I'm gonna post a link to your Twitch channel in the chat so if you do want to check out jake during his streams that would probably be amazing i'm sure but uh that is going to wrap it up for tonight's episode of time capsule i hope everyone had fun i certainly did if you enjoyed the show and would like to learn more about time capsule feel free to get in touch with me smooth operative at twitch.tv slash smooth operative i'd be super happy to answer any questions you might have or if you're interested in being on the show yourself um, if you're watching this on youtube in the future be sure to press the like button on this video subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and if you're interested in catching our shows live you can always go to twitch.tv slash games done quick our shows start weeknights at 7 p.m eastern and weekends at 1 p.m eastern but tune in tomorrow for no category left behind followed by speedruns from the crypt it all starts at 7 p.m. Eastern. I hope everyone has a beautiful day or night, and we will see you next time.